Well, we are going to continue a series, um, the I am, the seven I am statements in the uh, book of John. And it seems a bit, I, I was looking at this, you know, series that we we're in and knowing that we're dealing with the Christmas season and trying to figure out exactly how this fit into the Christmas season. And the more I, I look at it, especially this one, the more I realize that it actually does fit really well. We're going to be looking at it. I'm going to read just one verse. But it's going to be, uh, the story goes on from there. But it's John 15, 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Now, the true vine, as we know, as Jesus is declaring in multiple statements time and time again, again, he starts by saying, I am. That statement, I am, is a declaration of acknowledgement and reminding them of the name that God gave to Abraham when he spoke to, you know, the king and said, I am, and he talked to the Jewish people and said, I am sent me. And so in a way, he's now establishing an affiliation with, with each of these statements, he's establishing an affiliation with God on high. Now, the vine. Any good gardeners in here? Because I have brown thumbs, just so you know. All mine are brown and everything I try to grow turns brown. I thought I was achieving something. They say, hey, you got a green thumb, mine's brown. I like the plant to match my thumb. But anyways, you know, when you have a, uh, a garden, now I have a tendency sometimes I like to plant a garden just for a little bit of fruits and vegetables. And it's a lot of work. It doesn't just, you can't just put the seed in the ground and say, good luck. I wish it was because then I'd be having gardens all the time. But it, it takes a lot of work. The seed then starts to sprout up. Now, before even the seed goes in, the ground gets cultivated and it gets turned under and softened so that the seed could come up. But then uh, as, as the seed begins to grow, a couple things take place. You know, first you have to treat around it, make sure that no critters are getting on it. Or, um, you know, down in south, we, uh, we like to take CDs. You know, you take a CD and tie it on a string and it spins around and the light reflecting scares the animals so you don't get critters around it. Now, you also have to watch out for any of the bugs and insects. And so all this takes place, but then as you get a healthy plant, it says that you have to actually continually prune that plant. Even if it's producing fruit, you have to prune a plant. You guys realize that? That even a fruit-producing plant needs to be pruned. Now, it was kind of funny because we had this tree that would always grow down. And we wanted to grow up because it was when it was growing down, I couldn't being six foot one. You try to mow the grass and you you go underneath it and you hit your head on all the branches. So I had someone tell me one time, if you want to get the tree to grow in a certain direction, cut all the leaves off the side that you want it to grow. I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. Why well, I want it to go up. Why would and it said because of the fact that where it was pruned, it produces more. And it produces better things. Now, we know the fact that in this story, Jesus is the vine. God is the vine dresser or the gardener. And we are the branches. Now, God is the, is the vine. Without the vine, the trunk, the main part of the, the uh, fruit or whatever, that, the, brand, the tree, without that, you have nothing, right? Without Christ, without the trunk or the vine, whichever plant you're working with, without that main part, you have nothing. But on the same note, the neat part about the picture here is that if we are the branches, then we are the conduit between God and the fruit. You see what I'm saying here? Fruit very rarely grows directly on the, uh, the, the, the base or the vine. It grows on the branches. And so when we stop to think about that for a moment, we stop to think about the fact that God actually uses us as the branches to produce fruit. Now, we've all been told time and time again, story after story, year after year, I'm sure you've heard the story that we as a church need to start producing fruit. Now, I'm also one that likes to argue the fact that when somebody says, well, I'm not judging, I'm just a fruit inspector. Well, first of all, if I'm producing fruit, I'm doing probably better than you are. But... <laughs> But so many times we get caught up in this idea, I'm a fruit inspector or whatever. But, you know, the reality is, is that without God, I am, without, without Christ, I'm nothing. How can I ever produce a fruit if I'm not attached to God? 
Now, I know people like to argue that there are a lot of people out there producing fruit. Well, I think we need to get the understanding of what we're talking about. I'm talking about good fruit. I'm talking about fruit that's edible and that sustains life. You know, fruit that God really wants us to produce. Now, let me ask you a question. I shared the answer to this already. But which branches get pruned? Which branches get pruned? Every single one of them. Ooh. Every single one of them. It doesn't matter. Christ, is, you know, he describes in verse 2 and then down to verse 5, he says that, you know, there's a branch that does not produce fruit. There's those that do produce fruit. There's those that produce much fruit. And there's those that produce the most fruit. And it talks about the fact that, Christ, that God himself will prune as he sees fit. Now, how many like to get pruned? No one likes that because it's painful. It hurts. You know, in order to grow a tree, you know, like I said, or, or a plant, you take and you got to shave off that one piece that's not producing, that one area of the branch that's not producing. And you have to shave that off so it can grow again. Sometimes in a tree, you got to take and you got to cut a section off. Now, over next door, we had this bush right where the ramp was built. And I saw it kind of neat because when we first moved in, they, they came in, they hacked it off, and they built the ramp. And as I walk out of the house, I notice, man, that is some green life that's coming out of that, that stump. See, you know, in order to really kill to some of these trees, you got to kill them with some chemical or something of that nature. But this thing was producing, it was pruned all the way down to the base. And here it goes growing again. Something to be said about that. You know, there's a story by uh, Max Licato. He talks about a, a person named Deborah Rickett. Deborah Ricketts is actually a uh, screenwriter. Um, she's also one that actually helps to bring things, a film industry, I guess what they call it, a researcher, independent researcher for the film industry. Her job is to actually look at a film and say, is this correct? How many realize in Indiana Jones, when and during the story it shows his plane flying over as the map comes up and his plane's flying? You guys remember that? Any of you? Oh, sort of, okay. Well, you know, one of the things that most people miss is the fact that as it flew over, it said he's going to fly over Thailand. Well, this, the film was set in 1936. Thailand didn't exist till 1939. Bruce Willis in Die Hard 2. He's sitting there and runs to one of the phone booths. He's supposed to be in Washington, D.C. at the time. He runs to one of the phone booths and he grabs the phone and they forget to say it says Pacific Bell across the top. <laughs> Little errors that get found out and it's this person's job to look at it and go to the screenwriter and say, you missed this. Now, nobody likes what she does until it's done. And so many times we don't like what God is doing until it's done. Now, we love fruit, right? We love to see the fruit. We love to enjoy the fruit. But so many times we have to go through a little hard time. And what Christ is beginning to declare here, he says, listen, you know, discipline Discipline, discipline is about self. It's about fixing something within ourselves, right? Pruning is about our work. It's about us going out and starting to serve. And you know what? There's so many times that we, we miss opportunities. And sometimes God comes around and says, we need to fix this. And Christ is teaching a point here. He's saying, listen, if God's not pleased with everything that we're doing... It's okay. Because he loves us, he's going to take care of us. Now, he's going to prune a little bit. He's not going to accept. Now, evidence of our salvation is found in our... We've got one person who knows it. Evidence of our salvation is found in our works. By the fruit that we produce. Now, it's getting real quiet in here now. <laughs> Sometimes... I asked the question, what are four reasons why God prunes? First, and I got some illustrations I'd like to read if you'd allow me. 
First, to remove dead or dying growth. Parts of the tree, parts of the branch that are actually causing the rest of the tree not to survive. Kyle, an airline employee, after being, becoming a Christian, I noticed that there was, a, there was my monthly night out with my old crowd from high school. I began to leave, it began to leave me feeling empty and out of place. So I quit going. Interestingly enough, I can't say that word, a few months later, I led one of the guys to the Lord. God was pruning an old activity that was dying or dead. What do we have in our life that's dying or dead? The second thing that we need to do is it's pruning to expose the bearing branches to sunlight. Now, back in our house, back in the Oil City, we had this this uh, gazebo, or not really a gazebo, an archway kind of thing above these steps out into our yard. And believe it or not, we had grapes out there. I, I had no clue about how to grow grapes. But there was a story on it. It talked about how the fact that you have to go in and begin to peel apart, remove a lot of the wood out of the way. Because if a, 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 vin, a vine actually grows correctly, it'll grow over top of the producing part of the, the vine. And so you have to go and remove so that the producing part can have the sunlight needed to produce the fruit. So sometimes exposing fruit bearing branches to sunlight. We have to take time to look and examine. And this is where the church has to really step in at times. Because we have a good way of doing something just simply because we've always done it that way even if it takes 15 people to get two people to show up to church. And you know what? The same two would have been there whether the 15 did it or not. But because of the fact we want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. A third way, I guess actually let's go back. The second way more is what habits and hobbies do we need to drop? What is it in our life that's hindering our growth? What is it in our life that we put between us and God? What is it that is more important than God? Now, I'm sitting here preaching to the choir on a Sunday night because you guys are faithful because you're here. We know where your walk is. But sometimes we have to stop and say, can I grow closer if I eliminate this? Years back, I had a sermon. Now, this is actually, it worked out really well. When Courtney was younger, we had the diaper wipes, and they came in these little big, huge Lego uh, holders. They, were, they looked like Legos. I, that's why I illustrate them as. And, and as I began to talk, I began to put these things up, stacking them up one by one. You know, I got the meeting. I got this. I got that. We began to put this separation between me and God with all these different activities and hobbies and events that I thought was so important that I put another block on. And before long, I couldn't see beyond the wall because all I saw was what I thought was important. And this is where God comes in and says, I want to prune that right off there. Is this meeting so critical? Is it so important? This is, like I said, not the feel-good stuff, because you're talking about pruning, it hurts. But when you stop and think about it, how many of us have things, habits or hobbies, that we put before God? You know, I'm a, we have traditions in our house with Christmas. We have traditions and different things we've done over the years. Pajamas on Christmas Eve, because we all like to have new pajamas when we wake up. We, you know, just in, in Christmas morning, you know, we get up, we start, we unwrap the gifts and there's breakfast. We cook breakfast together. We just enjoy time together. But if there's anything that goes before God, then that needs to be removed from my life. If God, if God came and said, you know what, I don't want you to do pajamas one night, which I don't know, that's just an illustration. But whatever it is, that needs to be pruned out of our life. A third reason why God prunes is to increase the size and quality of the fruit. You know, sometimes you can... Now, we started in uh, Florida. We had this, this pineapple pop up out of the ground right by our house. I never knew pineapples grew like that. I had no clue. But it pops up out of the ground. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. 
So what did I do? I cut the top of another pineapple off and I buried it. And you know what? We now had two pineapples. But you know, it took two years for that pineapple to grow. So in between the two years, I cut another one off and put it out there. Before long, just so you know, I had seven pineapples every year. It was great. But the one thing is, is every once in a while, I had to go in and cut back the leaves on all these pineapple plants that were growing. Because if not, then they would come up real scrawny because the leaves were choking out the pineapple. When you'd cut it back, it would get huge. And sometimes we have to prune. Here's a question. What does God want you to show greater dedication to for the greatest fruit? Where does he want you to commit? Well, pastor, I can't because... Oh, wait, wait a minute. Remember that other thing we pruned. What's more important, God or... Now, I'm not sitting here trying to give guilt trips. Please, understand. Because I'm a firm believer that if you're not going to do it, God has somebody else that will do it, and you'll just miss the blessing. Is that safe to say? But so many times we have to understand that we have to have a greater dedication to God than other things. What are we dedicated to more than God? It's easy to sit by and say, well, my first priority is God. That's easy to say. <laughs> it's a different thing to live it. The last thing is, is pruning actually encourages new, new fruit development. This guy, Howard, a retired programmer. I thought that I would spend my retirement playing golf and traveling, but God has shown me some golden opportunities in short-term mission service. I think it is time to do something new for God, something really outside my comfort. When was the last time you tried a new ministry or kingdom venture? When was the last time we said, you know, Lord, I don't, this doesn't make sense to me, but I just see an opportunity. Let's go. I don't know how, I don't know, I, I don't understand, but I still feel, Lord, you're leading me and I'm going to go ahead and do it. When's the last time you said, okay, God, whatever you want, whatever it is, Lord, I will do it. When's the last time you said, yes, Lord, send me? Pruning so many times. Now, let me explain this. We are not here as a church to grow to be this bigger, fuller plant. We are here to produce fruit. Right? We can grow the numbers. We can, you know what, we can bring people in and never once preach on salvation never once preach against sin. We could sit here and do a feel-good religion, and I'm sure we would grow and be pretty plant. But it's a plant with a lot of thorns in it. We need to be a church that grows fruit. We need to be a people that grow fruit. You know, sometimes we ask questions, so how do we know which is which? How do I know if this is of God or is this just my personal opinion? We ask questions along the lines of why is this happening to me? Because you're doing something right or something wrong. All these answers are so, they cover everybody. Because God, remember, well, how many, what branches get pruned? Every branch. What is our level of fruit? None or some? These are questions you may ask along the lines. What do I need to let go of? Sin or self? How about both? And then you may have one more question. When will it stop? Pruning hurts. It does. The vine's ability to produce growth increases each year. But without intensive pruning, the plant weakens and the crop diminishes. Mature branches must be pruned hard to achieve a maximum yield from a horticultural journal. In order for us to produce a maximum yield of fruit, we all need to allow God, the gardener, to prune us. Even when we're doing good, God, prune me. Especially when we're doing bad, God, prune me. 
But you know, it's always funny when we're doing bad, we never ask that question. <laughs> but no matter what, for us to be a church, that's not just some big flower, but producing fruit church. We have to be willing to say, okay, Lord, I'm willing. Would you please, would you prune us so that we could produce good fruit and more of it? Now, I tell you that I'm excited, especially this morning, we saw some visitors with us this morning. How many realize that? How many said hi? <laughs> I should have saw my board members go like this, right? No, sorry. <laughs> if we are ever going to be a church that's going to produce fruit, we got to first love each other and we got to love the world around us. Not, ag not agree with what they're doing, but we got to love them. And we got to be willing to let God prune those bad attitudes, those poor perspectives of life sometimes. And we got to be willing to say, God, this new venture you want me to do, I'll do it. I don't know what God has called for people, but I know that he's still calling. He's still working. He's still challenging people because he'll never stop. Until the day we're in glory, folks. Remember, we don't retire. We don't retire. So remember, God is the gardener, Christ is the vine, we are the branches. Through us, the fruit is produced. Are we willing is the question. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this evening. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your blessing, Lord. I pray that you would continue to anoint each and every one of us, Lord, that we would, Lord, celebrate every day in your presence. Lord, we know it's difficult at times that when the pruning starts. We don't like it, Lord. We, we, we try to stay away from it. But we know, Lord, as, as you are our gardener, if there's anything in our lives that's not pleasing, if there's anything that we place between us and you, Lord, help us to remove it. Lord, I pray that each person here tonight would give you permission. Lord, prune me if need be. And Lord, prune me even if I don't think it's needed. I want to be a producing branch. Now, Lord, as we go our separate ways this week, I pray, Lord, that you would give us opportunity. Lord, give us peace and give us a joy this holiday season. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.